day here today. So I got off the ship for a little bit and I'll go back out after this live stream, but I figured I'd do it on the ship. So I knew I had at least uh, some sort of good, uh, good connection. And um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, if you're just watching, if you're watching this on replay, I'm in Trinidad, Tobago today. I'm on the Ruby Princess with Princess Cruises. Let me put these on, it's a little bit bright. I have been, um, I'm on a 103 day cruise. I've been cruising for about 50 days now. And uh, actually probably about 40, yeah, about 40 days now. And um, I'm currently on a 14 day um, Caribbean circle. And after this Caribbean circle, we'll head through the Panama Canal do a Panama Canal Central American cruise, and then we'll head up the west coast of the United States doing a wine cruise, and then um, up to Vancouver. And then from Vancouver, we'll go over to Hawaii. And then from Hawaii, we'll come back to Vancouver and start 21 days in Alaska. And then after that, I'm gonna fly over to Asia, uh, do some country hopping for a while, and then probably take either a carnival or a princess ship back from Singapore to the United States. So that's where we're, we're at right now. Um, also, if you're watching this on replay, I'm going to try to do chapters based on the questions I get. So hopefully it's a little easier for you to watch if I end up doing a long live stream. I've got my iPad here so that I'm looking down at that because it's easier for me to see questions. If my audio is good, just let me know and uh, that'd be great. So I see a bunch of familiar faces in here. Randall 86 is in here. Andrea is in here. Will G is in here. I know Rich is in here. Um, thanks everyone for showing up. It's a Sunday live stream. I was actually going to try to drop a video today, but I didn't get finished editing it. I just hit a few days ago. I hit 200 days on Princess cruise ships. So um, Princess doesn't give extra days for being a solo. They get it. They give you credit for extra cruises. Let me go back a second. So um, print, every cruise line has a loyalty tier system that they have. Most cruise lines do it by days. And when you're a solo, you can get double days. And so the days you have may not actually be how much time you have on board, especially if you're a solo or you're in a suite or something like that. But with Princess, they have a two tiered system. They have number of cruises as a way to go up their loyalty level or the amount of cruise days you have. For instance, it takes 15 cruises to get to their highest level or 150 days. So if you do one cruise, one world cruise, that's you know 150 days, you won't be penalized by that by not having 15 cruises. So they have two ways. Well, the cruise way as a solo, you get double credit for cruises. So it really only takes you eight cruises to get up to the highest level because you get double credit. But the cruise days still proceeds the same. So um, it's one or the other with them. It doesn't have to be both. So as long as you get your 15 cruise days, you're elite. And then uh, your cruise days just build up based on how many actual days you have on board Princess Cruising. So my 200 days on Princess Cruising are actually days I have on Princess Cruise Ship, not some weird um, combination of my um, solo cruises or anything like that. So it's pretty cool um, that, I, that I hit the 200 day mark and uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, Trinidad, last Tuesday on the Jewel of the Seas. What'd you do in Trinidad? I got off the ship and it seems okay, but it's a little gloomy today. And so I'm trying to figure out what to actually do in Trinidad. I didn't do a whole lot of research. I probably should have. It's funny, I went, you know, I was in the US Navy for a long time. And I don't know if you know this, but people from foreign countries can actually join the US military. And I'd say probably 10% of the US Navy is foreign nationals. And one of the big places that people join from is Trinidad, Tobago. I knew, I knew a bunch of people from Trinidad in the US Navy. And I should have asked some of my Trinidad, Tobago friends what to do uh, in Trinidad. That would have been a pretty <laughs> good idea, right? So if you just joined in the chat, if you don't mind smashing that thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. It helps more people find the live stream. I know it's early and yet in the US, in the West Coast, we are one hour ahead of East Coast here, so it's actually 11 o'clock for me. I know it's 10 o'clock 
on the East Coast. So I know it's an early, early uh, stream time for a Sunday morning, but I figured I'd go ahead and do this today since I wasn't going to drop a video because I haven't finished editing it. But yeah, so if you have any questions, just put a bunch of question marks in front of it or type out the word question and then ask the question. That'll make it easy for me to find, although right now it'd probably be easy. It used to be that you would get $25 at 30 days and increments up to $100. They did away with that. Oh, that's cool. I mean, um, yeah, that would have been cool. Uh, Jennifer Bates says, joining you on Saturday from the, or for the Panama Canal Transit, what time should we get to port to get on the ship? So, um, I mean, it depends on what kind of person you are. So if you're the kind of person, I'll use, I'll use flights as, a, as an example. If you're the kind of person that likes to be the first person on the flight, um, there's two types of people. The people that like to be the first person on the flight, right? Especially if, you're, if it's not assigned seating, like Southwest or something like that. Almost everybody's that way. But let's say you have assigned seating. Some people still like to be the first on the flight. I'm one of those people. Because I travel carry-on only, I like to make sure I have a space to put my bag. A lot of people like to just wait till the last second to get on the plane because they don't want to have to sit any longer than they're going to have to being on the plane. And so it depends on which type of person you are. So if you come on the ship early, like you come to the cruise port at about 11, you'll probably be on, be on the ship by 11, 30, 12, because Princess is actually pretty quick with their boarding. But you won't be able to go to your room, your stateroom, until like 1, 1 1.30, because they're getting them ready, because the previous cruise passengers left, and they've got to strip all the beds and deep clean the rooms and all that stuff. So you're not going to get your room till like 1 or 1 30. So if you have a carry-on, you might be rolling that thing around forever and waiting for your room to be ready. And usually cruise embarkation days are kind of exhausting for people. So um, if you don't mind waiting for your cabin and going and just chilling on the buffet or chilling on the pool deck or something like that, then getting there early makes a lot of sense. But if you're the kind of person that that stuff would annoy you and you want to be able to go straight to your room, just wait until like... I don't know, one, two o'clock, and come, and it'll, also, it'll you'll probably only take five, 10 minutes to board too, because all the people who, there's only lines early in the morning, at about one or two o'clock, there's usually not any lines to embark. All that big rush has already happened, and so it's pretty easy. If you have your medallion already, it's even quicker, you know? Um, if you don't have your medallion, it's still pretty quick. I never have my medallion sent to me, um, I just pick it up when I get to the cruise line and it never takes that long because more actually more people you more people get their medallion sent to you sent to them than pick it up at the thing so there's not that many people waiting to pick it up anyway so that's not really a big deal princess is really good at boarding so it's usually not an issue if you show up like at 10 30 10 10 30 though there's almost always going to be the big line out there Actually, when I've done turnaround days where I've stayed on the, where I've done back-to-back -back cruises, but I've elected to get off the ship on the turnaround day, you know, I leave at around 9, 9.30, and there's usually this huge line of people waiting to, to board the ship, you know, they get in line, and, um, and so there, it's a huge, huge line. So I guess you could get, in, get here as early as then, but you're going to be just waiting in line for a long time. Around 11, 11.30 is usually when they start letting people back or on board the ship. Although, lately it's been like 10, 10.30, so it just depends. But anyway, Princess is pretty efficient at getting people through. The only thing that makes it take a little while at Fort Lauderdale is going through the security, which Princess has no control over. That's, uh, that's like uh, the port, you know, immigration and all that stuff. That's doing that stuff, so. Uh, but yeah. Uh, someone said background looks fake. Yeah, the other background I had the other day, and uh, I can't even remember where I was, but it was St. Kitts, I believe, was way better. It had like the little island there. We are, um, the other side is where you would see that, but in Trinidad, the pier is a bunch of commercial shipping. So it's just a bunch of Connex boxes. So you would see a bunch of Connex boxes here, and then maybe a little pretty view of the island, but I figured the blue water would be better and you can see a little bit of the island right here so um yeah 
Let's see. All right, I'm gonna scroll back up here. And always, like I say, if I miss your question, please ask it again. There's Watbri spamming those, those uh, emojis that you get when you're a channel member. watbri has been a channel member for like three years. I greatly appreciate that, Watbri, especially sticking with me when I wasn't, I didn't make videos for like eight months. Um, let's see. Um, Lafon Death says, audio is good. Thank you very much for that. Andrea says it's 11 a.m. in New York. Wait a second. No, that can't be right. We're an hour ahead of you, aren't we? I know we went. I know we went forward an hour. I don't think it's 11 a.m. in New York. I don't think that's true. Is it? I know on the first day we went ahead an hour. Weird. Or was it just daylight savings time? Is that what it was? I never know that stuff because I'm always traveling. Um, oh, I feel like an idiot. I would have done this an hour earlier. <laughs> I would have started this an hour earlier. Uh, you can drop your carry-on in your room if you, if you find your steward. You can't, So now they're kind of locking the doors. And to me, you can do that, and your steward's never going to tell you no. But the whole point of them having those doors, doors closed is so the stewards can focus on getting the rooms ready. And so, like, I think dropping your stuff off in your room is kind of a rude thing to do. And I don't mean to call you out, Andrea. They do say, on this ship, on Ruby, they say, you, and maybe Sky lets you. I know you sail on Sky a lot. Maybe Sky is okay with that. But on Ruby, you can drop it off at one of the main dining rooms. You can drop your luggage off there if you want. Um, so you can drop your luggage off there. But on here, they have the doors closed, and it says, you know, we'll make an announcement when your room is ready. And so every now and again, I'll see someone doing that, and it makes this big, long, loud, beepy noise when they open that door because it's like this big, giant, watertight door. And um, it seems rude and disrespectful to the stewards. Now, on other ships, they may allow that, but on Ruby, they don't. They don't want you to do that, or they wouldn't close the door and put those signs up. Elise says, our, our flight arrives at 6 a.m. for Princess Caribbean Cruise. Is there a place you can sit until then? So if you're using Terminal 21, I don't know if you're doing Fort Lauderdale, Miami, but if you're in Fort Lauderdale and it's Terminal 21, um, you'll be standing outside waiting. Now, there are some benches, but um, those usually get taken up pretty quickly, so you'd have to get there really early, but it sounds like you might. Now, I will. Now, don't. Don't, don't tell people I told you to do this, okay? Um, but there's a Hilton hotel right near the cruise port. And you can actually walk from the Hilton to, um, to the cruise. And it's probably a 10-minute walk, 5, 10-minute walk. You can just walk to, if you're at Terminal 21, if you're at the main Princess Terminal, you can walk there in 5, 10 minutes, easy. And if there's like construction there, just walk through the um, conference center there. There's like a conference center that you can go in the door and you can walk. There'll be nobody in there usually. It might be one security guard, but they'll let you walk through. And you just walk through. It's air conditioned too, by the way. And you can walk through that. But you'll see this sidewalk and everything that goes to the, goes to the princess ship. So like... What I like to do when I'm in that situation is I like to just go to that Hilton. You got your baggage and luggage with you. You just look like someone that just checked out early in the morning. And go sit in there. They have nice little sitting areas in there. And just go sit in there. I mean, no one's probably not going to call you out on it. I'm not telling anybody to do this. I'm just saying I've heard of people doing this. And go sit in there, enjoy the AC, um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, I'm not telling anybody to trust us, but it is only a five-minute walk. But you could also just walk over to that convention center, like I mentioned. There's a little convention center right there. Um, and there's, li there's little seating areas in there. There'll be nobody in there. But it's always open, or at least it's always been open when I went over there. So you could actually go in the convention center and sit, too. Terrace, I'm glad I could catch your live stream before yoga. 
Background looks fake. Everyone always says that. Background looks fake. Here, I'll, I'll prove it's not. See? I'm I'm touching I'm touching the background. I'm not gonna jump into the water or anything, but I mean it's it's real. I promise you it's not a green screen. <laughs> Um, we are getting like some clear skies every now and then again. So that's what that time change was. It was it was daylight savings time. It wasn't an actual ship time change. Wow, that's <laughs> I had no idea. So that was like uh, I can't remember what day we got. It's about a week. Ago. So it was about a week ago that daylight savings time happens. I, ne I you know I'm always traveling, so I never know when that is. Um, a lot of countries don't do it, and then. When the countries that I'm in do it, I just think it's like, you know, just part of like the travel I did or whatever. So check the ship clock. I know what time it is here. It's 11.18. I know what the ship clock is. I didn't realize it was East Coast time because the first day this cruise got underway, that night we switched times. And then the next day we were in a port. So I figured it had to do with us leaving the East Coast time. Man, I feel stupid. Uh, do you find it hard to fill your time each day on the cruise? Now, if you look at a cruise itinerary, there's dozens and dozens of things every single day. I get up every morning, I mentioned this, and I walk 10,000 steps. I'm actually closer to 20,000 because I'm trying to lose weight. I don't know if you can tell, but I've lost, I don't know if you can tell, but I've lost 23 pounds now. My goal is 35 pounds total in this 103-day cruise. I was trying to lose a pound every day. And I've been able to do that. So I spend a lot of time walking early in the morning. I usually get up between 4 and 5 a.m. So I beat the rush and I can walk indoors. I don't want to get all sweaty walking outdoors. Although sometimes I do walk on the promenade deck if it's nice and cool out in the morning. But uh, yeah, so I, um, so I do that. And then I'll look at the schedule. And a lot of times there'll be trivia. There'll be something going on. And, and this is if it's a sea day. There'll be something going on. And then obviously in the afternoon, there's tons of things going on. And then in the evening, uh, there's live music throughout the day, starting at around probably 10, 11 o'clock. And then, um, then there'll be all kinds of events going on. There'll be shows. Like the guy who did the music for Wicked has a show on here now, which is kind of cool. Wicked's one of my favorite Broadway shows. If you don't know, I used to live at 55th and 8th in Manhattan, which is about three blocks away from where Wicked plays on Broadway, plus all the other Broadway shows. And I used to go watch... Wicked like once every two or three months, um, especially when there was a cast change to see the new uh, the new cast. But yeah, so um, there's always something to do on a cruise ship. And then on this cruise ship, every single day we've woke up somewhere new. We've been back to back to back. So we we're in St. Kitts, Barbados, um, Granada. If you follow me on Instagram, 30 and a wake up, 30 and a wake up yesterday. Granada if you stuff I also posted it as a YouTube short but not that many people watch YouTube shorts it doesn't show up in your feed but if you follow my Instagram you can oftentimes see what I'm doing throughout the day but um, but uh, where was I going with that I just lost my train of thought but yeah so every day I'm waking up somewhere new and I go out I've already been out in Trinidad today and I'll go out a little bit later although it's starting to get dark clouds again so we'll see if I get rained on but yeah how do you like Trinidad? So I've never been to Trinidad before, so I, I can't really make a judgment call. I just walked around um, uh, the little uh, sh uh, area for the cruisers, but I'll, I'll try to get out in a little bit after this live stream's over and go find some lunch and do some things. So yeah, that was puttering, puttering around. I like that name. Uh, you're ex-Navy, you should just put your watch on Zulu time. So, I, I mean, I do have my watch on a 24-hour clock because I just think it's dumb to have a a.m. and p.m. I think that's stupid. <laughs> and a lot of places actually in the world have a 24-hour clock, like Thailand, there's no a.m. p.m., things like that. So I am on, still on a 24-hour clock, but, yeah, you're right. I should just be on Zulu time, right? Um Uh, 
Andrea says the sky doors were open and the stewards were fine. Yeah, I guess it varies from ship to ship for sure. Does Carnival Lines owns Princess, so you can get onboard credit up to $250 a cruise. And on Princess, you can use your onboard credit for whatever you want, which is amazing. You can use it in the casino, you can use it for excursions, you can use it for whatever you want, which one reason I love Princess Cruises. But um, but yeah, if you have Carnival Line Lines shares, you can get onboard credit. And I think I don't know exactly what you get from the other Carnival Cruise Lines, but yeah, you definitely can get some stuff. Hey man, I saw your comment on Forrest Lee's video. Will you be settling down in Thailand? No, so I um, I do have, for those that have been watching my channel for a while, you know I lived in Thailand for almost a year, motorbiking through it. I have a Thai Elite visa, which um, is much more expensive now than when I paid for it, but it's basically, it's a 20 year visa, so I can come and go as I please in Thailand. And Thailand is one of my, the places I like to spend a lot of time in and plan to in the future. But I'll probably be there, I'm, I'm flying over there in May, I'm getting a bunch of dental work done, with like dental tourism type stuff. Sorry I keep messing with this, my, uh, it keeps getting bright and it's hard for, it, I, I wanna not squint on this video. Anyway, um, I'll be getting a bunch of dental work done on there and I'll share the videos of that. I'm probably gonna be spending a ton of money, like what would cost me like 30 grand in the United States, so we'll see what it will cost me in Thailand. I'm getting veneers and crowns, I'm just fixing you know, years and years of, 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 uh, of aging. You know, I'm almost 50. I'm closing in on 50. So I want to bring back my youthful smile. So, um, yeah. But uh, will I be settling down in Thailand? No, but it's always a place that I'll spend a lot of time in, in my travels. And maybe one day I'll settle down there, but I can come and go as I please in Thailand, which is one of the reasons that it's a big part of my travel plan. Plus, I love it. I've been going to Thailand since the 90s, and uh, yeah, I, I just love love Thailand. It's super affordable as well. You'll see in my videos, I'm gonna start doing the monthly. You know, I did, my last video was my monthly expense report, and it's done pretty well. It's gotten about 10,000 views, and I plan to continue to do that, whether I'm cruising or I'm traveling country by country or I'm doing van life or whatever it is. So you'll see my expense report when I get to Thailand. You'll see how affordable it is to live there even when you're paying Airbnb prices or hotel prices. Um, and it's much more, it's much cheaper when you're, you know, renting for a year. So, yeah. And if I ever decided to settle down in that part of the world, it would probably be a combination of Thailand uh, Malaysia and BGC in the Philippines. So it, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and uh, Bangkok and be and some other beach towns too in those in those countries. But it would be a combination of those three throughout the year because I there's something I love about each one of those and so I'd probably and it's really cheap to fly from Thailand to Philippines or Philippines to Malaysia. Or, I mean Thailand to Malaysia is like twenty five dollars to fly. So. Going Green Mom says, I don't think Kevin is capable of settling down. No, I just like being a nomad. I get bored in places and I want to go see something else. Uh, Nick Neck says, hello from Manchester. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you very much. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Um, you know, I did my 23 and Me a few years ago, and I am like 63% Irish. So I'm a, it's, it's like a big part of my heritage. So... My grandma, my great grandmother was a McGree, so yeah. I can't believe how fast you're losing weight. Yeah, so it's just been a combination of eating healthy and getting those steps in every day. Um, a lot of peop people talk about like how you can gain weight on a cruise ship, but you can also go the other way because there's so many healthy, so much healthy food that's cooked for you every day. So every day they have some sort of sa grilled salmon, um, grilled fish, obviously the salad bar with all of the like um, different kinds of leg legumes, is that how you say it, legumes, legumes, and all the kinds of things that you need to like promote healthy weight loss. 
like an unlimited supply of fruit. Um, and so it's actually really easy to, um, to eat healthy on a cruise ship. And then I've also done a little bit of fasting in there too. So whenever I, I've hit a couple walls where I'm like, okay, I'm not losing any weight anymore, even though I'm still eating healthy, getting my steps in. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do a 24 hour fast. So I'll eat at like 5 p.m. I'll eat dinner at like 5 p.m. And then I won't eat again until 5 p.m. the next day. And that seemed to like jumpstart me back into like the weight coming off. So that's what's worked for me so far. And um, yeah, I'm 25 pounds down. I got up to 210 pounds. Um, I, I, for most of you know this, I had cancer last year and I was going through cancer treatment. And it was not the kind of cancer treatment that helps you lose weight, it was the opposite. It was the kind that makes you sedentary. And so I gained a bunch of weight. And then I went home, I started cruising and I lost a, like nine pounds. I have a video about like how I lost nine pounds on a cruise ship. And I started losing weight, but then my mother had some issues and I had to go help her. And I stayed with my mother for like three and a half months and she just cooks like the best food, but also like not the best food for being healthy. And she makes so, yeah, I just gained a lot of weight and I was actually heavier than I have been uh, in my life. I got up to 210 pounds and I, a healthy weight for me is like 175. So that's what I've been trying to get down to. I am like 187 right now something like that, so I got like 12 more pounds to lose. So, yeah. Yeah, there's 118 people watching, as Ted pointed out. Only 26 thumbs up. If you don't mind smashing that thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. It helps more people find the live stream. Thank you very much. Hey, is Johnny's Journey in the house? What's going on, Johnny? How you doing? I've been talking about you a lot lately. Your ears must have been ringing. Um, Kevin, you just missed Carnival. You should have been there last month. Oh, Carnival, yeah, that would have been amazing to be in Trinidad during Carnival. Uh, what other islands will you be visiting? So, oh, my phone is being taken up right now. Let me, actually, you know what, I might have it on my iPad here. That's what I keep looking down at, by the way, my iPad. Let me pull it up here and see if I can, uh, see if I can t just tell you. Here, let's see, iPad, 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 where's it at? Um, so we've already went to St. Kitts, Guadalupe, Martinique, Barbados, Granada. We're in Trinidad today. We still are going to Aruba and Bonaire. And then we have two sea days and then we're back in the port. And then I'll go through Panama Canal, 15 days. So we're gonna hit up a bunch of, uh, we're gonna hit up a bunch of uh, Central American ports. I'm excited about Huatuco. I always mispronounce that, but that's one of my favorite places in Mexico. And then uh, we stop in LA, pick up a bunch more passengers, and then we do a West Coast wine cruise up to Vancouver, so from LA to Vancouver. And then from in Vancouver, we start a Hawaiian cruise, a 16-day Hawaiian cruise. We're gonna do four islands, and then we, uh, then we go uh, we go from Hawaii back to Vancouver, and then we start 21 days of Alaskan cruising. So I'm super excited about all of that. How's the casino treating you? Pretty good. I mean, I just do what I always do. I play my free play and whatever I win from my free play. And then at the end of the cruise, whatever I have left on my onboard credit, I pump into the casino and anything I win from that. And that just keeps my, that's kept me in the system. So. Hi from Banff, very cool. Uh, which line would you choose to do a transatlantic Pacific crossing? I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, Ken. If you're looking for a traditional cruise experience, I'd say Princess, and they're the most affordable. Go on Cruise Plum right now and search uh, search transatlantic, or you don't even have to search transatlantic cruises, just search and then sort by cost per day and you'll see a bunch of transatlantic cruises, some from MSC in the first two or three pages of results and some from Princess. You can see they're super affordable. So from an affordability perspective and a classic cruise experience, I would say Princess. If you're looking to party a little bit, I would say Norwegian. Go a little bit, so. Hello from Portugal, what's going on? I lived in Lisbon, Portugal for a while, I loved it. 
let's see. What's the longest you've been at sea from your Navy days? At sea, if you're talking about away from home port, um, but, all, but pulling into ports, 11 months. If you're talking about straight time at sea without pulling into ports, 183 days. That was during uh, when we invaded Iraq in 2002. Um, yeah, it sucked. It was like one of the worst experiences of my life. I don't, I would never want to relive that. It was terrible. And I was on a really small ship. It would have been okay maybe if I was on an aircraft carrier where there's like a big store on board. I mean, at that time, the, they actually had some Starbucks coffee on board the aircraft carriers. And, but I was on a little small frigate, which is about 200 people. And it's just, it, it was not a fun experience going that many days at sea. It was awful, actually. And we were in the Persian Gulf, Arabian Gulf, whatever you want to call it. And it was like 120 degrees every day. So it was not an enjoyable experience. So, yeah. Deborah Sh uh, Schwab's in the house. She just moved from uh, Hawaii, and she's in Florida now. Very cool. Pensacola, Florida, which is a Navy town. Speaking of the Navy. Carolina says, I did smash the like button. Thank you very much. Uh, Going Green Mom says, what is Zulu time? So Zulu time is a time that uh, the military uses as one specific time that everybody goes by. And um, when, you, when you tell units to do something, you tell them in Zulu time because that time never changes. That clock never changes. It's always, there's only one Zulu time in the world uh, and so that Zulu time is always what you go by. So when you're speaking to units in different time zones, they know what time to react to something. It's going to be Zulu time. So that's what Zulu time is. Uh, if you Google, like, what time is it Zulu, you'll, it'll tell you right now what Zulu time is. Uh, just today booked... Princess Majestic, 33 days from Sydney to Seattle. That's amazing. That's going to be awesome, thanks to your inspiration. It says Wonderlust with Joe. That's awesome, man. Congratulations on that. That's going to be that's going to be an awesome cruise, man. I'm a little bit jealous. Any experience on uh, Majestic Princess? No, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. There might be some people in the audience right now that have been on Majestic. I bet you Andrea Gold has been on Majestic before she'll be able to tell you if it's a good ship and I'm sure it is it's, a, it's one of the newer ships I believe uh, Carolina says aircraft carriers are really big uh, she says she's seen the USS Nassau now that's a small carrier actually we wouldn't even call that an aircraft carrier in the Navy that is not an, we wouldn't, in the Navy, the Nassau would not be considered an aircraft carrier. It would be considered a Gator freighter, and it'll, it does have aircraft on board, helicopters and um, Harriers, which can take off vertically instead of having to go down a runway. Um, but in the Navy, we wouldn't even call the Nassau an aircraft carrier. So that tells you how big an aircraft carrier is, because you think the Nassau is big, but it's really not that big, big of a ship when it compared to a, what we consider a real aircraft carrier which can carry F-18s and things like that uh, horizontal launch aircraft so we wouldn't even consider uh, the Nassau a aircraft carrier we would cons we call it a gator freighter because it's uh, it hauls a bunch of Marines and um, and uh, supports Marine Corps operations so we wouldn't even consider that an aircraft carrier even though it does carry aircraft Although every ship carries aircraft, like even the small frigates carry helicopter on board. So every, technically every ship's an aircraft carrier. Even the smallest ship, like I was on frigates, we had uh, two helicopters on board, on board the ship that we could launch and land. How much time do you plan to spend in Singapore? Um, I mean, probably... Uh, a month or two. I love Singapore. I might spend time in Johor, Malaysia, which if you know, so 
Singapore is a small little island, and it's it it it, it is right next to Malaysia. Like Malaysia's right here. You can cross a bridge and in five minutes and be in Singapore from Johor, Malaysia. But the price the prices in Johor are way cheaper. So if you stay in Johor, you can just, they have a train, a high speed train. You can get on that train every day and just go into Singapore and save yourself. If you're staying there for a month at a time, save yourself thousands of dollars. A studio apartment in Singapore in a good area of Singapore is gonna cost you about, if you book it on Airbnb, two to $3,000, where you can book the exact same setup in Johor for $600 for the month. So it's one of those travel hacks that I want to introduce people to. Um, Malaysia is an amazing place, by the way. Uh, Kuala Lumpur, that city rivals Singapore. It's super clean, super modern, or Hong Kong. I mean, it's an amazing city. And it's super safe, and it's a, it's a Muslim country, and it, but it's super tolerant. Um, it has a huge Chinese population, a huge Indian population. And so uh, it's, um, it's super tolerant of all lifestyles, even though there's obviously a heavy Muslim influence there. Um, it, it not, and not saying that Muslims are not intolerant, just like the laws that apply to, um, the strict things that Muslims adhere to is not expected of people who are not Muslim, if that makes sense. So, um, but yeah, it's a it's a amazing country and it's super inexpensive. Um, and the food is, I would say, Thailand and Malaysia are neck and neck for the best food in the world. And I've eaten everywhere. And believe me, I love Mexican food. I love Italian food. But I would say they're neck and neck on the best food in the world. Um, Malaysian food is like this. It's kind of like Thai food, but also because it's so heavily influenced by Chinese and Indian cooking. It's like this fusion of Chinese, Indian, and Thai cooking, basically. It's amazing food. So, I know you're former Navy. I'm former Marine. As you know, we are on Navy vessels. Spent six months on a Westpac float. Uh, don't know how you guys do it. I was going crazy. Uh, was on the New Orleans. Oh, that's very cool, very cool. Yeah, I mean, it. that's why I have so much sympathy for, and um, I'm so sympathetic to the people who work on these cruise ships because especially the people, the stateroom stewards, they don't get a lot of time off the ship. So they're kind of doing like similar to military deployments as far as like quality of life. And it's a tough life to live. I mean, I spent, um, I spent uh, 20 years in the Navy, 10, uh, actually 11 of that on sea duty. I have six deployments. I spent over, I have over six years of time at sea. And yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a rough life and I do not miss it, to be honest with you. I miss the camaraderie of being in the military, but I do not miss the lifestyle. Definitely not. But cruising is nothing like, nothing like being on a, on a Navy ship. <laughs> nothing. As, as a passenger. Cruising is more akin to being at an all-inclusive resort in a beautiful place. That's what it's more akin to. It's nothing like being in the Navy. Uh, Wonderlust says, stopping for three days in Tahiti. Oh, man. I'm gonna have to look at that itinerary. That sounds really good. I might join you on that cruise. What about Chilean food? I love food in Chile. Um, you know, I did a month in Chile. For those who don't know, I lived in Chile. I lived in um, Santiago, Chile for a month. And the food is great. Food is great. Sorry, I keep rubbing my nose. My, I have really bad allergies. And whenever I'm in the Caribbean, man, when we pull into port, there's something in, in Caribbean countries that makes my allergies go nuts. My stepdad was on a submarine. Very cool, very cool. A frigate was supposed to be fast and very lightly armed. Putting two helos on a frigate sounds like Secretary of Navy, Secretary of Defense had a real hangover when they did that. No, nah, I mean, so 
frigates are anti-submarine warfare ships primarily for the most part. Like if you ever watched the movie Hunt for Red October, actually the ship that I was on, the USS Reuben James, was the one that was hunting the Red October. And those helos are actually anti-submarine helos. So a, a ship, a submarine can hear ships for sure. We can find submarines for sure on the frigate, but our most powerful weapon are those helos. Because those he, since those helos are not on the water when they're in the air, they drop, they drop in this, uh, they drop in this, uh, this uh, sonar buoy that they can listen to, and they can find submarines really easy, and the submarines have no idea that they're up there, and they can drop torpedoes on the submarines, and so it's actually really smart to have um, uh, helos on submarines. That's Submarines' primary, or frigates' primary warfare capability is actually anti-submarine warfare. A lot of people don't know that. Um, it's not really offensive. Uh, offensive like versus land targets or anything like that. They don't have Tomahawk missiles or anything like that. They just have defensive missiles. And uh, they're still good at like, like if you need to, like, like there's some pirates off Somalia or something, a frigate is a good ship for that. But the primary... Um, the primary warfighting capability of a frigate is anti-submarine warfare, is finding submarines, and primarily with the helicopters. So that's why it has helicopters on. They're actually a weapon that, uh, that the uh, frigate deploys. Are they Apaches? No, they're, uh, they're like, uh, I think they were 52s. Um, 52s, they're nothing like Apaches. They're much more robust. They need to be able to. They also do a couple other things. They they go over to ships that have the, the supply ships, and they basically cargo the stuff over from the supply ships with a hook. So they don't even land on the on the supply ships. They hover above the supply ship, and the supply ship will hook a big box full of stuff, and then the helo will fly over to our ship and drop that stuff up on the deck and it'll just keep bouncing stuff over from the supply ship to resupply us so we don't have to pull into a port if we don't need to. I mentioned we were at sea for over 180 days and that's how we got resupplied. By uh, We didn't, you know, nor, uh, a lot of times you'll resupply by pulling in but you can resupply at sea. So, If I missed your question, throw it out there again. I have 104 people in the live chat, 77 thumbs up if you don't mind. Smashing that thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Helps more people find it. Uh, are they like Apaches on a frigate? No, uh, they're not. They're bigger. But yeah, in the U.S. Navy, I don't know what about like other navies, British Navy and stuff like that. But in the U.S. Navy, a frigate is primarily submarine warfare. So, hunt submarines. I'm all caught up on questions. That's pretty cool. If you have any questions, or if I missed it for some reason, please throw it out there again. If you're just joining the live chat, I am in Trinidad, Tobago today. Um, you can kind of see it, the land a little bit in the background. Uh, I've already been off the ship this morning, got my initial view of it, and came back on the ship, do this live stream, and then I'm gonna hop back off. After this live stream, go get some lunch, Try to get some local stuff and not eat at the cruise port. Try to find something. Uh, what ship am I on? I'm on the Ruby Princess. I've, I'm on here for 103 days. I've already been on here 40, I don't know, 40 something days. Um, started in the Caribbean. We're still in the Caribbean. We're going through the Panama Canal pretty soon, hitting a bunch of places in Central America. Then we're heading from LA to Vancouver doing a West Coast wine cruise is what it's called. Then we're going from Vancouver, British Columbia to Hawaii and back, uh, hitting three islands in Hawaii. And then we're going up to Alaska for 21 days. So that should be awesome. Uh, TexMed Ranger says, I deployed on the USS Thomaston LSD 28 with Marines on board. It was crowded, yeah. 
Very cool. Do you have a favorite port that you ate during your cruise? Hmm. That I ate. Oh man, let me think about that for a second. On my on the cruise, I, I got to limit it to the cruises. Um, I really liked the food in Le Mans, Costa Rica. I mean, that kind of stands out to me because it was recent. But I would say maybe. Um, Man, I'm trying to think of, oh, anywhere in Mexico, obviously. <laughs> Go out and get some good street tacos. Like, you can't beat that. I would say that, would definitely. Watbury says, I live in wine country. Very cool. Very cool. We'll be floating up the coast. I'm excited about it. Do you plan on going to any wineries? I don't know. Um, I'm going to look at what the excursions are. Maybe I'll hop on an excursion or something. I probably won't. I, most of you know I don't drink alcohol very much, like a, very rarely. So, But I do like a good red wine, so maybe I will. Favorite food from Chile. I can't even remember. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was called. I can't remember the name of it. I mean, obviously we had empanadas a lot. And this little, uh, you know, I lived in um, Santiago. I can't remember the name of the neighborhood. I mean, this was in 2019, so it's been a while. But, yeah, so I can't really remember. I've been traveling so much. But I do remember that the food was pretty good. Someone said, eating any good food lately? Yeah, man, I'm eating good food. Hopefully you watched my Limon Costa Rica. I specifically did that food eating section for you, Calvin. Tobago. There you go. I mispronounced it. Sorry about that. Yeah, the Navy is building frigates again. They realized that the that going away from frigates was a mistake. So yeah, that's very cool actually. Will the Pacific be rough going to Hawaii? It just depends. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, yeah, it just depends on, you know, if you hit if you hit bad weather conditions you know it's all up in the air to be honest with you most likely not but it, there's always a chance of it have you visited Sentosa in Singapore I married a Singaporean and have family there yeah I've been to Sentosa many times so I've been to Singapore a lot in my life the Navy pulls in there all the time I've probably been to Singapore pff, at least 20 times in my Navy career so, and I've went there on my own too. So I've been, I've spent a lot of time in Singapore. I know a lot of, a lot about Singapore before it was cool to go there. Um, before crazy rich Asians made it popular to go there and go to the Michelin starred hawker. I was going to that hawker a long time ago. Now it's impossible to like, the line is like ridiculous. But yeah, so yeah, I, I, I definitely know Sentosa Island for sure. It's a fun place. Is Lahaina on your itinerary? I can't remember if it is or not, to be honest with you, Paul. I can't remember if Lahaina is on there or not. Hey, Robin Jan Can Cruise. Go check out their cruise channel if you haven't yet. What's going on, guys? Good morning. I can I could recommend some really good wines in Chile. I, that's one thing I did really like in Chile was the Chilean wines. Do you normally get seasick? No, I mean, I was in the Navy for 20 years, so I was, uh, you know, from 18 until 39, a little bit over 20 years, actually. So I, uh, I really don't get seasick. Um, I have been seasick a couple times in my life, and it's miserable, but yeah, I normally don't. But my mother came on a cruise with us, and she got those behind-the-ear patches, and those seem to work well for her. One thing I will recommend if you do take seasick pills or do the patches, start them at least a day or two before your cruise because once you get seasick, it's too late. So start it before you start cruising. That's my advice for you. Have you booked your Singapore Trans-Pacific yet? No. Um, so there's two leaving Singapore in the October time frame, one on Carnival, one on Princess. The one on Carnival is half the price of the one on Princess, but I'm watching the one on Princess because if I, by the time I... I leave this cruise ship, 
I will have 270 days on board Princess, so I'll only be 30 days away from 300 days. So taking that Trans-Pacific will get me that 30 days, and I'll be at 300 days, which I just think is a cool number. And so I want to take the Princess Cruise, but right now it's double the price of the exact same cruise on Carnival. So, but yeah, I haven't booked it yet. Sometimes I book that stuff last, last minute. Anyway. David said I was, was there when I was in the military in Singapore. It's great. Yeah. A lot of the places I like to go I found in the military, like Kuala Lumpur I found in the military. I know people are going to say, well, that's not on the coast. But we, the, Na the U.S. Navy pulls in along the coast of Malaysia. And then I can't remember how long the bus ride was, probably an hour to, Malay to Kuala Lumpur. But they would bus you over to Kuala Lumpur because where we were at, there wasn't a lot of stuff to do. So we'd get bussed over from our ship to Kuala Lumpur. And um, yeah, I stayed in the Hilton there in the Navy all the time. That's how I built up so many Hilton points, was uh, staying there. It was super cheap too, by the way. But yeah, I love Kuala Lumpur too. That's another place I spent a lot of time in, in the military. Uh, Joe the Computer Guy said, I'm considering the Trans-Pacific on Carnival. Yeah, I mean, I have sailed Carnival once before um, I did a Caribbean cruise on them a long time ago, but I haven't sailed Carnival in a long time, so it, uh, it would be a new experience for me. So, I mean, I've sailed in their portfolio of cruise lines that they own. You know, obviously I've sailed a lot on Princess, so. All right, I'm all caught up on questions. If you got any, throw them out there. Uh, we are at 111 watching, 86 thumbs up. If you don't mind, smash that thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. For those just joining me, I am cruising for 103 days on this ship, about 40-something days into it. We're on a Caribbean circle right now. We're in Trinidad right now. So, yeah. Uh, Rob and Jan Can Cruise are doing the Carnival Cruise, so maybe I'll do that one, and then I, I'll have a bunch of people from the channel on that. Yeah, it's much cheaper. I mean, it's literally half the price of a, a similar cruise on Princess. Are we wearing green? I'm not wearing green today. But 23andMe says I'm like 63% Irish, so I feel like I'm legit enough Irish that I don't have to wear green to, to, uh, to be uh, uh, represented. <laughs> How big is the ship you were on? I mean, the Ruby Princess seems small compared to like Sky Princess, but we were in next to a P&O ship the other day and we just dwarfed it. It's a, it's a pretty big ship. It's got 17, 18, no, 18 decks total, if you count the like very, very tippity top, um, and like 17 decks that actually have stuff on them, like indoor stuff. So it's a pretty big ship. And uh, I don't know exactly how many cruise passengers are on that it can hold, but I'd say probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,000 cruise passengers, I would say. Maybe a little less, but somewhere in that neighborhood. We're getting on the boat May 14th, wondering if those green outdoor floors are turf. Yeah, these are turf. This is a walkway, and they just have, they just have the walkways turfed. So probably so people don't slip and fall on the, uh, the non-skid, even though it's called non-skid, it, it can be pretty slippery still. It's actually funny that deck, the deck you see over there is actually the same kind of decks they use on Navy ships. Yeah, it's kind of funny actually, seeing it. The thing for me, I get deals from Carnival for a casino and last minute deals for 100 bucks. I don't want to book it right now I have 100, 131 day from Brisbane to Seattle. Okay, very cool, man. Um, yeah, I mean, that's why I book so many Princess Cruise because I get so many casino deals. Uh, someone said try the patches at home first to see if the side effects hit you hard. That's actually a smart idea. Try the Dramamine at home too. And just see, because it does, can make you a little bit drowsy. Have you ever hit bad weather on a cruise? Yeah. Hey, Johnny's Journey. Um, I wonder if you, uh, I've been talking about you a lot lately. I wonder if you, uh, is, that's why you're on the live stream, your ears were itching. Um, 
I've ever hit heavy weather on a cruise ship. Yeah. I mean, not what I considered heavy weather, but it made my mom sick when we were doing the transatlantic. Like, weather where you were going like this on the ship. And it wasn't super easy to walk. But I mean, I'm used to small Navy ships that go like this. <laughs> like where you're standing on the, on, the, on the wall, the bulkhead, half the time. You're putting a foot on the other. That's how much you're, you're rocking. So, like, I don't consider it like heavy seas, but a lot of people on the cruise ship, like a thousand people were sick in bed on the cruise ships yeah, from it. So, but I wouldn't consider it. But that was like on a transatlantic. But in the Caribbean, you don't normally hit that rough of seas, really. Headed out again, says, are you bored? No, man, I never get bored, man. I mean, and I don't mean this in a, like, to be a dick way, but, like, if I was sitting at home in a, in a condo in St. Louis that I had bought, I'd be, I'd be a lot more bored. <laughs> so, yeah, like, a traditional life to me is much more boring than even, like, a boring time on a cruise ship. Because every morning I'm going to wake up in a new port, you know, so... I don't ever get bored. Like, I've been t cruising for about, it's actually been over a year, but I took a three-month break to um, help up my mom because she was having some shoulder issues. And so I, I helped her out for three months, so I took a three-month break. But I've actually, I'm going to end up doing more than a year on cruise ships when it's all said and done. Last year at this time, I was actually in, um, I was in Costa Maya, Mexico on a, on a cruise. So I, I got, like, this pop-up today telling me that. How's the party band and shows? Yeah, they're, I mean, they're pretty good on here, Andrea. I mean, it's just typical princess stuff, you know? And uh, yeah, they're pretty good on here. Um, I don't spend a lot of time at the shows. I did go to the one by the Wicked, the guy who did the Wicked music, and I thought it was really good. Um, there's one show on here that's always on here that I've seen like a couple times. Uh, they've had some uh, uh, magicians on here that have been good. I talked about it in my Sea Day video that I did recently. And having fun looking at cruises, I can't wait until retirement so I can take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, Cruise Plum is the best resource. If you haven't watched my video, How to Find Cheap Cruises, you're new to the channel or something, go check out that. Go check that out. I don't know why that guy ducked. <laughs> I feel bad that he ducked. Have you been to the arcade? Yeah, I have. It's always empty. They're going to have to find something else to do with that place. So for those who don't know, Almost all princess ships have this place called Churchill's Lounge. And it used to be a place to smoke cigars and cigarettes, an indoor place. There is an outdoor smoking area. I don't personally smoke, but it was it's usually right next to the casino. And they turned it into a video game room, I guess hoping to attract more kids, but it's always empty. So, I mean, turn it into something that people are gonna use. You know, that would be my advice to princess. But yeah, it's out there. Uh, Jeff says, currently in Iowa. Uh, my view, unfortunately, is different than yours. Hey, I'm from Missouri, man. I, uh, I feel for my Iowan neighbors to the north. Are you celebrating St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, I mean, they're doing a bunch of different stuff on here. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't know it was St. Patrick's Day until this morning I woke up and everybody was had uh, St. Patrick's Day. I don't ever look at the calendar. I usually don't know what day of the week it is. Um, I know poor me but yeah so I had no idea it was St. Patrick's Day to be honest with you <laughs> until I saw I, I scheduled this uh, live stream yesterday not even knowing it was St. Patrick's Day I have my iPad out here that's why I'm looking down I have my trusty iPad Pro which I adore by the way do you have the same steward for back to back cruises so I'm doing it, for those who don't know, I'm doing 103 days on here. For the first 10 days, I was in a cabin and had a steward, and then I switched to a new cabin that I, that I'll, that I will have been in for 34 days, and I've had the same steward. At the end of this cruise, I switched to another cabin that I'll have for 59 days, and I'll have the same steward the entire time. So pretty much I do. If I would have been smarter about it, I probably could have been in the same cabin the whole time, but I, I wasn't smart. Uh, do you eat dinner with other people? Sometimes I do. Like Andrea Gold's in here. She would always invite me to the main dining room. And I would go, when I, when I get invited to a main dining room with somebody, I will go with them. But normally I just go up and eat in the, uh, 
in the buffet. Sometimes I'll, if I see people that um, have stopped me in the hallway and asked me about YouTube and stuff like that, I, if I see them, I'll, I'll say, hey, do you mind if I sit with you? And I'll, I'll sit with them. But most of the time, I just eat by myself and just enjoy the view. And you know, yeah. So I'm, a, I'm very much an introvert, so alone time doesn't bother me at all, to be honest with you. And by the way, you can go eat with people anytime you want. I've got a video that I did maybe three or four videos ago about like, is solo cruising lonely? And you can go down to the main dining room and, and just go get in the line for the main dining room. And when, when it comes to you, say, I want to be seated with somebody. And they'll seat you with uh, people that also want to be seated with other people. And so that's pretty cool. That's a good way to meet people. There's also the solo cruisers meetup that you can go to. I didn't go on this cruise at all. Um, shame on me because I always dog solo cruisers who don't do that but I, did, I just decided on this cruise I was going to relax because I I've been doing that a lot on other cruises so um, but yeah uh, there's plenty of ways to get interaction with other people if, if that's what you want one of the best things about cruising is you don't have to worry about cooking or cleaning that's one of my favorite things about it I love it my stateroom steward loves me too because I leave at like between four and five in the morning and I don't come back until like nine or ten and so he just cleans my room in the morning I don't expect him to do it in the evening as a matter of fact I turn my do not disturb sign on as soon as I get back to my room so he knows not to that he doesn't have to mess with mine he actually loves mine because number one I'm I don't spend a lot of time in my cabin so it's pretty clean like, to be honest with you, he could come every three days if he wanted to. I think I told him that in the beginning. But he still comes every day, changes out my, changes out my uh, towels and my, uh, makes my bed. But I pretty much sort of make my bed anyway every morning. It's just something from my military time. But he does it, like, in a more professional way. But, yeah, so um, I think the stewards actually love having a person like me because they can, they can just do my room first every morning because I'm gonna be gone, and they know I'm gone, and yeah, so. I keep looking down, by the way, because I'm looking at my iPad. I was on a celebrity from Hong Kong, Singapore in 2018, had to shelter in a harbor due to a typhoon in Da Nang, Vietnam. It was pretty intense, all outside decks were closed, yeah. I mean, I've had to do that before on ships shelter, but that's a pretty cool place to have to shelter. Da Nang is one of my favorite places. Vietnam, in general, is one of my favorite places. So, that, You lucked out on places to hang, man. That's a cool place. I'm going to be living in Vietnam, probably Nha Trang, uh, which is a beach town, for a month sometime this year. So look out for that. Super cheap place to live, by the way, and beautiful. Food's amazing. Uh, John says, Ahoy, I don't know if you covered this, but I was wondering where in the world would you go for dental for any me and medical procedure? So I'm actually, in May, I'm going and getting what would be about $30,000 in the U.S. of dental work. I'm getting all of my fillings that were done like 20 years ago when I joined the Navy. I'm getting rid of those and getting either new ones or crowns. Whatever I need to do to bring back a Hollywood smile, um, like it, like I had when I was in my 20s. Whatever I have to do for that to happen is what I'm going to do. So it's probably going to be a combination of crowns. Oh, you don't have to duck, but thank you. I'm just live. You can say hi to my audience if you want. <laughs> what's, going on? what's going on? What's your name? Derma. Derma? Thank you. Thanks. Um, whatever, um, whatever uh, where was I going with that? He works in the kids. Uh, there's like kids areas on board the ship, and he actually works in the kids, kids area. I always see him in there. Uh, I think he works in the like 13 to 18 year old kids playground area or whatever. With a bunch of video games basically. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to get like th what would cost like 30 grand in the US to do. A bunch of cosmetic stuff, right? It's a bunch of vanity dental. But I'm going to Thailand in, at the end of May and getting that done at a place called Bangkok, Bangkok International Dental Clinic, which was the first ever dental clinic in Asia to be approved by U.S. standards, like whatever the U.S. regulatory board regulates dental in the United States, gave them the stamp of approval, and they've got it every year since then. 
They also have a hotel built into their clinic, so you can just stay in that hotel while you're getting all this dental work done. And uh, I booked the hotel for a month. I don't know if it's they're going to go in the mouth and look at it and see exactly what they need to do. They, they gave me like an estimate of what work they need to do based on my dental x-rays from a couple years ago and also my uh, uh, photographs I've sent them. But uh, So I'll be getting probably a combination of crowns and veneers and stuff like that and fillings. So I will definitely be uh, documenting that on my YouTube channel as, as much as they'll let me. And so, yeah, you'll get that. My favorite place for medical is Kuala Lumpur. Um, go watch Grounded Life Finances. They found that she had this, um, I think it's fibro, fibro across all her organs. So she had surgery there to remove it. And it was like, the surgery was like $3,800 counting the days that they stay in the hospital. And this isn't like a normal hospital room. This is like a hotel. And uh, yeah, go, go check out their YouTube channel. It's pretty informative when it comes to that stuff. But I like getting my, I like getting my um, medical done in Malaysia. You can get a full body scan, like CT scan, everything you need, blood work and everything at a medical facility in Kuala Lumpur, which I'll be honest with you is better than in the United States, in my opinion. They're private hospitals for about three to $500, depending on what you want done, but they'll check everything. And they actually give you the results the same day. A doctor sits down with you the same day. And it's like everything, like CT scans, cat, like all kinds of stuff, EKGs, um, blood work, everything. So uh, Thailand is where I found out I had the cancer that I had to go get treated, the prostate cancer. Um, I actually went to a, and in the United States, my doctors weren't even giving me the test for prostate cancer because I wasn't 50 yet. But I had it done. I got some like male, like male uh, men's health checkup in Thailand that cost me like 150 bucks. And that's where they found my prostate cancer. And I have, you know, I'm retired military, so I have TRICARE for life. It cost me $15 a month through Humana. That's what I have it through. And so, I, you know, I could get that stuff for free, but I just like the health care in the private medical facilities overseas and it's not expensive at all so um, I would say medical stuff in Malaysia because I'm just so impressed with their standard and dental stuff in Thailand although people tell me that I can get much cheaper dental work in Mexico or Colombia than um, Thailand but I just feel comfortable with this Bangkok International Dental Clinic I've done a lot of research on it so I just feel comfortable with it so we'll see how it goes I'm not recommending to Hey, hopefully I'm back. Let me know if I'm back. Ah, I hate when that happens because I lose a bunch of people. Okay, someone said you're back. Good. Um, I actually just hooked to the Starlink. I don't know what happened just now. I don't know if I ran out of data. I might have ran out of data on my international plan. But hey, I've never seen my what shows up when I type on my phone and it's like this little yellow highlighted thing. Never seen that before kind of cool um, all right I'm gonna try to scroll up here I don't think I can scroll up sorry about that for some reason it's not letting me scroll up let me let me try again okay it looks like it is because I know I missed some super chat so let me get those first Nan on the run you're awesome Thanks for the $5 Canadian for coffee. I appreciate that. Also, you're a channel member, so thank you very much. Um, and Michael, thanks thanks for uh, for donating and uh, giving a shout out to Vietnam there. Okay, um, do I miss being a lawyer? Uh, I miss the, ac the academic challenge of it because it's like really fun, like coming up with a defense, whether it was being a juvenile defense lawyer or being a corporate defense lawyer, it, it, that part of it's a lot of fun, but I don't miss, you know, 18 hour work days all the time. Is there any resource you know that can pro provides how many passengers are booked? No, I don't know any resource like that. Maybe somebody else will know that, Stephen, but I do not have an answer to that.
what would be the best topic to get to the level quickest without selling products outside of YouTube? You're asking Joe that. I don't know if you're asking me that question. If you're asking me that question, let me know. How come you just didn't book the Serenade of the Seas, which is touring the world, 61 countries? Um, what, why, uh, so why did I not just book a world cruise? So when you're a solo cruiser, booking world cruises is the most expensive option. There's no discount. There's no solo supplement discount. Um, it's always double, and it's just way more expensive. It's much more easy to find a ship that's doing a lot of transatlantic, transpacific, and piecing together a world cruise for a solo cruiser. It's like below half the price that it would cost me to book that um, a, a world cruise ship. It's much more expensive to book a world cruise ship for a solo cruiser. Do you include pay upfront in your cruise fare? Yeah, so. When you go to Cruise Plum, it includes port, port fees, taxes, and gratuities, and cruise fare in their number of cost per day, which is the true number of what a cruise costs. And I, I go in depth on that on my How to Find Cheap Cruises videos, but a lot of solo cruisers get wrapped around the axle about solo supplement, which is not an indicator of an affordable cruise at all. You can end up paying more money with no solo supplement than going on a cruise that has 100% solo supplement where you're paying double what um, a passenger with two people in the room would, would pay. So I don't want to go too in-depth on that on here, but go to that video and, and you'll find out why. But, um, but, but now I get so much onboard credit with Princess, and Princess lets you use your onboard credit for whatever you want. A lot of cruise ships won't let you do that, but they will also let you use it for gratuity, so that's what I do. I use it, it pays my it pays my gratuities and internet usually, and whatever's left over, I just pump into the casino, so I stay on casino deals. And if you wanna know about that, go watch my video, um, my recent video about how much it cost me to cruise for a month. I go in depth on how I get free cruises on Princess, how I did it, so. Kevin, do you still have your Fufu coffee? So I've been buying, every time we pull in the US, I go to Publix, and I buy my favorite almond milk creamer, which is silk creme brulee almond milk. And so I've been doing those, but I just ran out. So I have been drinking the butter pecan lattes on board, but those are like four bucks every time I drink one. So that eats into my onboard credit really quickly when I do that. So I prefer to just go get it. If, if you're sailing out of the United States, especially Fort Lauderdale, you can just walk over to Publix, which is about a 20 minute, 25 minute walk from the ship and get whatever creamer you want and keep it in the refrigerator. The ship lets you bring it on board, no problem. It looks like I'm a little bit choppy. Are you guys seeing me a little bit choppy here? Funny you say you can go live in Vietnam for a month. Ironically, I'm gonna hide out in September to escape Bangkok for a while. Very cool. I mean, that's what a lot of people do. They go, uh, especially to reset visas, they'll go to Vietnam so they can reset their US visa. Man, it looks really choppy to me. Uh, that sucks. Let me see, don't go nowhere. I'll be back in two seconds. I'm gonna switch over, back over to LTE. So we'll see if, it, if it's still crappy or, because before it, it went out on me. I don't know why, but it did. So hopefully it doesn't this time. But I just shut off my, uh, I just shut off my, uh, Starlink and I went back to uh, LTE. My T-Mobile LTE. Uh, fun fact, you can use FSA funds to travel to Thailand and get medical things done, very cool. In the USA, a Tylenol pill costs more than 3,800 bucks, yeah. Uh, someone said, I heard they're lowering the prostate check to 45, yeah. And I had family history of it too, so 
I knew I was at risk for it. Um, but uh, yeah, they would never check it unless I paid for it. I think it was 180 bucks for them to check for it in the US. Uh, Michael says uh, clinics in Mexico and Colombia uh, cost about the same in Thailand. Okay, that's good to know. For dental, you know, I know a lot of people go over to Turkey for dental and hair transplants and stuff like that. It just hasn't been on my radar. And uh, yeah, I, um, I don't have a reason why not Turkey, but I, uh, I'm very comfortable in Thailand with stuff, so that's why. I do have Humana Health Insurance also, but I don't know if, I, if they cover international. Yeah, I've never even made a claim, to be honest with you, so I don't know. Columbia's a little cheaper for simpler procedures, but more expensive for complicated things like implants. Okay, there we go. Uh, question, are the room choice offerings on Cruise Plum the same prices when you contact your travel agent? They should be, Jody. They've always been the same price for me when I just went and booked on the website. Heck, the travel agent might even be able to give you a better deal. All Cruise Plum is is a cruise aggregator. is a It's like a search engine like Google. So they're just taking information from the cruise lines and, and putting it to you. It's just a central location. They don't make any money. You can't book a cruise on there. They're not trying to sell you any cruises. That's why I like them because most cruise aggregators oh, are just basically yeah, travel awesome. agents uh, that are making money off you clicking their all right, I see I'm, I'm going out again. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to try to go to the other side of the ship and where I know there'll be better connection because it's closer to town. Hopefully it's uh, nice and sunny. Oh. Woo, I keep losing you. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, give me a couple seconds and I'll be on the other side. And it should be, uh, should be okay on the other side because it's the town side and so there'll probably be better LTE coverage on this side. I'm just fingers crossed that it's shaded because the Caribbean sun can be Caribbean sun can kick your booty. Alright, I'm basically going to the same spot on the other side of the ship so it should be nice and clear. I'll be there in a second. If you type a question now, by the time I get over, everything will be good. Whew. It is hot as all get out right now. All right. Ooh, it's, it's actually better shaded than the other side. That makes me happy. Might be able to Take the glasses and hat off. Let's see if I can give you a good. You don't get the ocean background anymore. Gotta, gotta just have this background, but it's still cool. All right, let me uh, open up my iPad here, and I'll get back into into questions. Actually, ask your question again. Hope oh, well. You know what? It might it might be caught up. Okay. Whew. Actually, let's see. Maybe we'll go this way. Eh, about the same. Okay. Yeah, it should be. It should be better on this side. The reason I was on the other side in the first place was, um, was that it. Uh, it was a better view. So I figured I'd give you guys a better view than a cloudy mountainous background. But I mean, mountains can be nice too, I guess. Actually, we're getting that overhang as part of the view, so let's go to this side. And then we'll just get mountain. Yeah, we'll go, that's what we'll do. We'll go to this side. All right. There we go. Oh man, I lost a bunch of people. I hate when that happens. Okay. Monica Stevens, a channel member, says, question, do you give, do people give you a hard time about wanting to go to the United States to get medical or dental work done? To go out of the United States, 
I'm getting a lot of flack for wanting to get work done out of the States. I don't know who's giving you flack about that. And if they are, it's like, quit talking to them. Unless it's like people who are like, maybe they're just concerned about you. But I mean, if you do your research and go and know like what's good care and what's not, like, like Kuala Lumpur's private hospitals are just globally recognized as some of the best hospitals in the world. Like they're better than the United States. Like if, if I didn't go to that health clinic in Thailand, I would have prostate cancer right now and not know about it because my US doctor wouldn't even test me for it. So I did go back to the US to get the cancer treatment, but yeah. Kevin, uh, nope, I already read that one. Okay. Do you even get off the ship anymore in the Caribbean? Yeah, I get off the ship every day. Every, every, um, every stop I get off uh, and do something. Um, I haven't been to a lot of these ports that we're on in this cruise, so I definitely have been getting off. Um, but yeah, I always, I always get off, especially when I know a port well. I actually, it's kind of like coming home for me, so I definitely get get off. Uh, in the ports. Uh, Travis says, we're taking a Caribbean cruise, Grand Turk, Amber Cove. I love Amber Cove, it's beautiful. Half Moon K, have you been to those places? I've been to all three of them. I mean, they're all great. I really like the beauty of Amber Cove. I mean, anywhere in Turks and Caicos, the water is gonna be crystal clear blue, so it's gonna be great. Uh, anytime I think of Grand Turks, I think of, um, I did this like uh, stingray excursion. So that's what always comes to my mind. The water there is beautiful as well, but Amber Cove is just really pretty looking. And Half Moon K is nice too. <laughs> Sharp look without the sunglasses. Yeah, I always feel like I look like a scary person because, you know, I got this bald head, beard, you know, black glasses, black shirt. I just feel like I scare kids. Uh, there's a question from Cantex Diva. Cantex Diva. Do you ever run any issues with the Jones Act? No, for those who don't know the Jones Act, it's like, when you pull out of a U.S. port, you have to hit a foreign port before you can pull back into the U.S. port. Um, and cruise ships obviously plan around that. They know better than to not do that. So I've never had an issue with it. What is your Ray excursion done? Th was your Ray excursion done through a third party? I'm pretty sure it was done through the cruise ship. Um, whatever their sea rate, I'm sure it was. Um, it was when I was on a carnival ship in like 2017, actually. It's a while back. Did you ever experience symptoms before? Did you experience any symptoms? No. Mine was actually pretty microscopic, and they actually said you'll probably live another 30, 40 years with it. <laughs> if you don't want to have it removed. And I was like, no, nah, let's just do it. So we did it. All right, I'm all caught up. If I missed your question, please ask it again. I didn't miss it on purpose. I just can't scroll back because of that pause. Uh, Kevin, personal question, how tall are you? I'm just curious. I'm 5'11", a little bit over 5'11", 5 5'11 5 and a half. The doctors always mark me as six foot, but I don't like saying that because I'm not actually six foot. <laughs> what, uh, what would be the best topic to make 3,000 per month on YouTube? I mean, van life. I mean, I was making 10,000 a month when I was doing van life content and I wasn't even that good. <laughs> like, and I wasn't doing a ton of videos or anything. That was the easiest for me. Maybe it was the time frame I was doing it, which was during the pandemic, so people were really interested in that. Um, 
I know financial YouTube channels make good money. If you watch Grounded Life Finances, they do an income report every month. They make about $18,000 a month off their YouTube channels. Their new one that they started on finances, which only has 20,000 subscribers, is making like 4,000 a month by itself. So I think finance might be a good one to go into. So yeah. Do I invest in Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, I used to talk about it a lot. I used to have a channel about investing and um, yeah, I, I have multiple Bitcoin, so. But I don't like talking about it on here because I don't want, that's not my primary source of investing. Um, long before I got into cryptocurrency, I was doing um, standard S&P 500 and dividend growth investing. And that's where like a majority of my passive income comes from. That's my number one passive income is from my stock portfolio that I've been investing in since 1994 when I joined the military. And then the second biggest money I have coming in it fluctuates between my military pension and my YouTube channel. And then the third is my, um, my rental income that I get from rental property that I own. And then, uh, and then I have like, uh, cryptocurrency that's just like money that's just sitting there. It doesn't really earn me anything, but obviously I've owned, um, I've owned a Bitcoin since 2018, so obviously I've done pretty well. It's been a roller coaster and it always is, but I don't even pay attention to it because I don't, re I don't really need that money. I just leave it there and then maybe one day I'll cash out of it and buy something with it. Or maybe one day it goes to zero, but that won't affect my life any, but it's a super small portion of money I have, and I would not recommend anybody buy cryptocurrency until they have a significant portfolio and more time-tested assets. Uh, computer guy says I'm 5'11", but nowhere near 180. Yeah, so I was 210. You say you're nowhere, your goal is 200. I mean, dude, I, I lost, I've already lost 25 pounds, you know, 23 pounds on this cruise. I'm, uh, I'm this morning I was 187. Um, but that was first thing in the morning with no clothes on. So, yeah, I, uh, I started this cruise at 210. And I'm down to 187. My goal is to get down to 175. My goal was on a 103-day cruise to lose three pounds every 30 days or every three days. So, which I think is like a realistic goal. And all I've done is get, a, get a, as many steps as I can in, in a day done and eat healthy. That's it. Uh, Wonderless says, I echo about Thailand. I had an MRI done for my back and spine. Cost me 300 bucks and my Thai healthcare plan covered it. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Going Green Mom says, I used to say six foot with boots on before I hit a deer at slow speed. I was 5'11 uh, and a half. Now I'm 5'10. Yeah, yeah, sounds like I had some spine compression going on there. I think I was over six foot before I got in my motorcycle wreck. <laughs> Does the Ruby Princess have love boat horn? No. So for those who don't know, there are some princess cruise ships that their horn plays the love boat theme, you know? When they hit it, it's like da 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 the the horn does that but the Ruby Princess does not have that horn. That's more of the ships that were built, I think 2020 and on, I think have those. Uh, Bitcoin was 72,000 three days ago. Yeah, it's a, it's a roller coaster. I don't even pay attention to it, to be honest with you. Wonderless Travel Joe says, I have nothing but positive experience with Thai dentists. Do I carry a scale? Yeah, I carry a travel scale. It's about 
about this big, kind of like the size of an iPad. And then cruise ships always in the gym have scales on them, by the way. I mean, don't use them at sea. Same with the travel scale. If you try to use a travel scale at sea, it's not gonna give you an accurate number. You gotta wait till you're in port so the ship's not moving. But yeah, you can use a combination of those two. Um, I found the travel scale to be pretty accurate, uh, relatively accurate, especially when you know like what you're weighing on another scale. You can kind of say, okay, it's, it's saying I'm a pound less than that scale. So you kind of get an idea of what, where it's at. But um, yeah, it's, if you go to my cruise packing video, I think I have it in that one. If I don't have it in that packing video, go to the packing video before that, and it should be in that one, and there'll be a link to it, uh, an Amazon link to it, if, that's, if you're looking for an Amazon link. Yeah, Johnny says how important subs are. Yeah, subs are important. Like 70% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed. And I have 100 and I'm, I'm wow, that's not, man, that sounds like freaking gunfire. <laughs> I've heard that Trinidad can be a little shaky. I don't think it was gunfire though. I think it was something on the pier. Might have been pier noise. But wow, that didn't sound, that sounded crazy. I don't know if you heard that, but it sounded like, um, semi-automatic gunfire to me. Uh, but that's my military training kicking in, but I don't think so. But uh, yeah, so like 70% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. And I have, I'm 25 subscribers away from 105,000 subscribers. So imagine how many subscribers I would have if more people subscribed. I would say views are more important than subscribers, but having more subscribers can give you more views, especially if they have that notification bell and they like your content and they'll come and watch you because then that just gets you views right away when, you're, when you publish a video. And if you get those views right away, that helps push your video up the YouTube algorithm and YouTube will start sharing it with more people outside of your subscriber block. But um, yeah, 70% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed, um, so yeah. Yeah, consistency is the key for YouTube. Like, don't follow my example. I'm a bad YouTuber. Um, like, right now, I'm making about three to 4,000 a month off my YouTube channel. If I was heavily into it and I never stopped, number one, I'd have a lot more subscribers right now. But I mean, I've taken breaks where I haven't made a video in eight months. Live streams don't make a lot of money, by the way. So these live streams don't, live streams don't help. Like people who just live stream on YouTube, unless you get a bunch of, unless your audience is like the super chat kind of audience, like live streams are not where you make money. You make money off videos that advertisers advertise on, that's where you make money. Like if, but if I was consistently posting two to three videos a week um, on a consistent basis, my YouTube channel would easily be ten to twenty thousand dollar a month YouTube channel, easily because I get a really high, a really high um, um, CPM, which is cost per mille, which means a thousand views. Like how much money do you make for every thousand views? And for me, I'm somewhere in the $20 per every thousand views, which is really high. When I was making videos overseas, I was only like $2.72 per milli. So it would take me a huge amount of views to make any money. But the combination of my van life and my cruise life audience, it's just an audience that, that um, advertisers want to pay for. It's, and I'm not calling you guys middle-aged, but it's middle-aged people with money. You don't, you know, you're not thinking about buying a $200,000 RV or taking a $3,000 cruise if you don't have money. So my audience is people that will spend money. So advertisers will pay more money for them. So, yeah. So I get, a, I have a high CPM. So if I made a bunch more videos, even a crappy video of mine, We'll get five to ten thousand views, which is you know, a hundred to two hundred dollars in revenue, right? 
So, and then I get revenue from all my old videos that continue to get tens of thousands of views a month. So if I'm making new videos, I'm, like I had a video recently that's now it's got 50,000 views. So, you know, that video is gonna make a thousand bucks. It also is a video about products I use. And so people are clicking on Amazon links and buying those products like this wallet right here. I've sold like over a thousand dollars Actually, more than that, way more than that, over $10,000 of these wallets. For whatever reason, pe people that cruise princess like these medallion wallets that are that magnet onto the back of your phone. And I've sold like $10,000 of these, so I get 6% of that. So it's crazy. So um, since that video has done so well, I've not only made money off ad revenue, but I've also made money off people buying the Amazon products from it. So um, yeah. Hope that, hope that makes sense. But yeah, so Global Life Finances does really good videos about how much money they make on YouTube, and it's re like it's really eye-opening. And it's also like, um, um, the, you know, they always say like, YouTube is a generational opportunity, especially for people that are, are you know my age, in their 40s, 50s, and 60s because advertisers just pay a lot more for that audience. And so it's, it's, it's just, a, it's an, if you stick with it and continue to make content, um, it, it takes a little while, but once you start, once the money starts rolling in, even when I don't make videos at all, I make $1,000 a month, just off people watching my old videos. And then when I start making videos, not only do I make money off those videos and my old videos, People watching my new videos causes them to watch my old videos, so that increases the value of the old videos by a lot. So it's just, it's, yeah. Are you still loving the level eight suitcase? Yeah, I love the level eight suitcase. Um, it's great. Uh, it's my favorite thing I bought. Well, not bought, they gave it to me, but it's my favorite thing that I own right now. Have I been to Trinidad before? No, it's my first time to Trinidad. Did I ever try marriage? Yeah, I was married for two years, uh, way back in the day, and that cost me a ton of money. So I would, I would say that's not a, a good investment. <laughs> it wasn't for me. I get, if, I, if I was to give someone YouTube advice, number one, I would say don't do live streaming until you have an audience built up. I would say the most important thing for you to do is make content. Make it, you'll get better at it. At first, nobody will be watching, but you'll start to build up an audience. It took me a year to make any money on YouTube. It took me a year, so there you go. But like Grounded Life Finances makes money like right away. I haven't taken their YouTube course, but that might be a good one to take. The Honda Element will get you views. That's what I've been talking about with you. I've been saying, hey, if I buy a Honda Element, I'm gonna you know, pay Johnny's Journey to build it out, a micro camper, if she can fit me into her schedule. But yeah, I know a Honda Element will get me views. For sure, it will get me views. Van life is where I made my, my most money. I had $10,000 months in van life, and I wasn't even making a lot of money or a lot of videos. I got lucky, some videos went viral. Um, I also was doing it at the right time. I was making a ton of money off affiliate links. So, yeah. Do the wallets come in pink? I don't, I think they do come in a couple colors. Maybe they come in pink, I don't know. But uh, people like this, so, you know, if you haven't watched that video, the reason I love this wallet so much is usually when you're on a cruise ship, you have to leave your room with three different things. You have to leave your room with your phone. You have to leave with your room with your cruise card, which, or medallion. And this holds both. There's a cruise card slot here. Also a slot for your credit cards and an ID. And you, and your wallet or your purse. With this, it's, it magnetics back to the back of my iPhone. 
And so I just bring one thing with me. I have one thing that I'm carrying, so I love it. Shoot, I scrolled down too fast. Sorry. Someone said, I'll definitely be upgrading to the level eight suitcase before I start my cruise life. Yeah, so I, I got one for free from the company, but then I bought one. I don't have any deal with them. They just sent it to me and said, hey, if you like it, talk about it on your YouTube channel. They sent it like a year ago and I never talked about it, but I love it. I've been using it for cruising the whole year and go to that video in my last video that I did and uh, You'll see why I love it, but it's really about the wheels. The wheels are so good. And I bought the big version for my mom. Actually, I paid for it myself, and she loved it. It's amazing. It, it pushes so easy. You don't have to pull it behind your back if you don't want to. You can just hold it, like, straight up, and it just fly. If you let go of it, it'll fly through the airport. It's like the most the, – the wheels are so good on that thing. That's why I love it so much, to be honest with you. But – um yeah, and it's like the carry-on's pretty cheap. I mean, for some people, 160 bucks isn't cheap, but it's cheaper than my nomadic backpack it was, which I love, by the way. I just started having some back issues. Uh, well, I've had back issues for a while, but that was making them worse. And so I switched to the, the roller, roller bag. But yeah, I love the thing. Do you like van life or cruise life better? Well, you just gotta watch my last video, Vicky. I answer that question in that video. My, my video called um, answering all your questions, but I will answer it here. But there is a whole, I have a whole video about it where I give you a, probably a more thoughtful answer because I can edit out my, my endless rambling. But uh, I like all of the above. I love all the forms of travel I've done, whether it's, for those who don't know, I've been traveling since 2019 full time. My first year I traveled in a, a group program called Remote Year where I paid um, a monthly fee and it handled all the logistics of travel. I traveled with the same group of people, same 35 people. We traveled for a year. We lived in a, a new country every 30 days. It was an amazing way to travel. Um, then my second year, that's when the pandemic hit. I bought an RV, a van, a Winnebago Travado. I started traveling in the van for a year. Then after that, I flew over to Thailand, bought a motorbike, motorbike throughout Thailand. And then this year I decided to live on nothing but cruise ships for a year. And next year I'm gonna do a combination of all of them, I think. And so I love them all. Like that, that's what I want my life to be, a combination of all of them. I wanna fly over to Asia and Europe and live in countries for a month at a time and then take a transatlantic cruise instead of flying back to the United States or Trans-Pacific over to Asia to relocate and then maybe hop in my Honda Element built out van that Johnny's gonna build for me and cruise around the United States for a little bit and then rinse and repeat. So I love them all equally. I, I, I like doing different stuff and so choosing one would be my worst nightmare. It's kind of like uh, working a nine to five job would be my worst nightmare. Yeah, that's true, Rob and Jan. It wasn't the marriage that cost me money. It was the, it was the divorce. <laughs> Andrea said, I think level, level eight is giving discounts. Yeah, I think they do have like a 20% discount on Amazon right now. But yeah. Oh, Deborah says this wallet does come in pink. There you go. There you go. And for all you vegans out there, it's obviously fake. But what I like about this one, I've actually had a couple of these but this one is really strong the magnet is really strong so it doesn't like some of them will come off the phone like the phone if you just apply a little bit of pressure and i'm always worried it's going to fall off like when i put it in my pocket where this one is like wham i mean it's on there like you're you have to wrestle it off there but it's also a phone stand by the way and also a way to hold your phone like when you're doing like live streams and stuff like that but um, but it's also a phone stand for straight up or sideways. 
which is another reason I like it. And it holds like two to three credit cards and your ID card on this side, and then a card here. I would put a cruise card here. And then if you have a medallion, it holds that here. But you could put an Apple AirTag here so you could track your wallet if you lose your wallet. That's what this is actually for, but I use it for my, my, uh, my cruise medallion on Princess. Do you wear a money belt under your shirt to go out in towns? Do you use, do you keep that in your pocket? Also, do you get a passport stamped when leaving port? So some ports will let you get passport stamps. I don't do that anymore. Um, I, I just got a new passport actually. That was another reason I had to go home. I helped my mom, but I also wanted to renew my passport. It was gonna expire this year, so at the end of the year. So I uh, went and got a new passport. And I got the big passport this time. Last year, last one I had was the smaller one. And I just filled that thing up and I was running out of pages. And so I'd rather not get a passport stamp. I know some people like love passport stamps, but I travel so much that I don't really care about passport stamps anymore. But I think in most ports you can request a passport stamp. I think in most you can, but I don't, it's not something I do. 99% of ports I've been in cruise ports, even in Europe, I don't need to take my passport. I can just take a, a, a government ID, so like a driver's license. So that's what I do, I take a driver's license. I travel with multiple IDs, by the way. I have my driver's license, I have my retired military ID, I have my passport, I have my passport um, photo ID that's for Mexico and Canada, I have my global entry ID and I have my um, what other one do I have? I have one more. Oh, I have my Thai driver's license, both my motorcycle and my car driver's license. So I have a ton of different ID cards. Um, I would always recommend that people travel with two or three. So if you lose one, obviously you have one. Uh, I think the passport card is a good thing to get because uh, as a backup, because if you lose that thing, who gives a crap? So you could carry that instead of your driver's license. I mean, I have my driver's license in there right now, but I probably should have my passport card. Because if I lose that, who cares? I still have my passport, I still have my driver's license, you know, whatever. So, but yeah, I always recommend people travel with multiple, multiple of those, also multiple credit cards and debit cards. So I have multiple credit cards I travel with, you know, where I leave, I have one in my wallet, but I have the other one somewhere else, and also debit cards as well. So I have multiple ones. I have videos talking about that, but yeah. Joe the computer says, I'm not a big fan of cruise life, but live in a class A, so you live in basically a house on wheels, <laughs> um, full time with a couple months cruising. That's actually really cool. That's like a, like that's why so many people started watching my channel again. Like I didn't have a lot of people watch my channel when I was traveling with a remote year, doing international travel with them, living in a different country every month. I didn't have a big audience then, but then I did van life and I got a big audience. And then when I went back overseas and was traveling, motorcycling throughout Thailand, I had a smaller audience. Uh, some of you were loyal, but some, you know, some people for obvious reasons were not interested in that. But a lot of people who like van life and RV travel like cruise life. So that's a very good crossover audience. So it, it, that one actually works pretty well together. A lot of people that like van life and, and RV life also like cruising. By the way, in Peru, you can buy a motorbike cheap and ride to other countries. I would love to do that. Motorcycle Diaries is one of my favorite books of all time. And uh, uh, yeah, I would love to, to recreate that. Going Green Mountain said, Kevin, have you tested the magnetic strips on any of your cards since the magnet thing became a question? I haven't had any issue with any of my cards and they've been sitting in here forever. My main credit cards in here, my Chase Sapphire Reserve and my main debit card are in here. And I haven't had any issue with that, with them becoming demagnetized. I've used them and I've used them in ATM cards and I've used them swiping because like uh, my Chase Sapphire Reserve, I've used it 
Walmart because they don't have chips there for whatever reason in Missouri. They have swipes, but usually I use chips which aren't impacted. And when you're overseas, most places use chips. Very few use the magnetic strip. The United States is really the only place that I've ever encountered places that only use magnetic strip. 90% of countries will not let you use the magnetic strip. They will only do the chip. So it doesn't impact the chip at all, but I've never had any issue with the magnetic strip. So um, I have not had any issue with that. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll back down here. Yeah, once your passport, always, if you're gonna travel a lot, always order the big passport book. I don't even think it costs any extra money always order the big one because once it's full, um, actually, when I was down to like three pages, the countries I was going into started giving me a warning. Like, hey, you only got three pages left. So make sure you get the big one. I don't think it costs any extra money. So just get it even if you're not gonna travel a lot because if you do decide to travel a lot, then at least you have it. But I'd rather people not stamp my passport to be completely honest with you. Carolina says, I have my military ID. I didn't know you were in the military. Thanks for serving. Uh, an American passport and driver's license, international driver's license. Uh, last year, I got my Chilean passport renewed on Friday. Very cool. Uh, Joe says, I have over 100,000 miles on motorbike. Very cool. Andrew said, I didn't find Kevin until he started Cruise Life. Yeah, a lot of people found me on Cruise Life or Van Life. That's 90% of my audience. I don't think a lot of my audience that was in the beginning. So I, ha when I, I had my first viral video was in the country of Malaysia. I had a video, I think it was called either Five Things Not to Do in Malaysia or Why I Love Malaysia, one of those two. They both got a lot of views. One has like six or 700,000 views right now and one has like, 300, 400,000 views. It was my first video that uh, got a ton of views. And it was mostly Malaysians. Malaysians love YouTube and they love videos about Malaysia for whatever reason. So, but I don't think my Malaysian audience watches any of my other content. So I, a big por portion of my early um, watchers were family, friends, and Malaysians. Because that's where most of my subscribers came from. Want to use a transatlantic cruise port uh, as part of our um, transport to and from Europe? Portugal, Albania are on our list. To rent for a month, advice on which? Oh, I mean, I have never been to Albania other than in the military, so I haven't lived there, but I have lived in Portugal. I lived in Lisbon for a month, and I freaking loved it. I've heard nothing but good things about Albania, I mean, you can take a cruise ship from the west coast or east coast of the United States that will stop in Barcelona, that will end in Barcelona. So it'd be really easy for you to get over to Portugal. Probably, I mean, the flight would probably be 50 bucks. You could probably take a train for less than that, way less than that. So, I mean, Lisbon might be the way to go. Um, I don't know if, if, Albania is included in the Schengen. I don't think they are. So you might do a combination of both when you run out of Schengen days. When you're in Europe, Schengen countries in Europe, whenever you're in any of those countries, the time you're in those countries count against your 90 days in Europe. And so you can only stay 90 days. So you have to get, go to a non-Schengen country. Uh, and I think Albania might be one of those. I'm not 100% positive on that, though. Uh, 
Joan says, I found your channel the first remote travel year. I don't usually comment because I always, I'm always late to the live streams. Wow, that's awesome. That's so cool. Like there's not many of you left that found me then and stuck with me. <laughs> Gone Green Mom says, I found Kevin somewhere during van life on an interview with a channel I knew. Yeah, you definitely came around in van life, Going Green Mom, for sure. Uh, you sold me on Thai Elite Visa when you were back in Chiang Mai. Did you get the old Thai Elite Visa? Wonderlust traveling with, with Joe? Did you get the old version? I'm assuming you did, because now it's super expensive. So if you did, I mean, we look like geniuses now because we got it for a bargain. So hopefully you did. Michael says, I found you through one of your packing videos. You might have found me in the old days then. My packing videos used to be one of my most popular videos, other than those, um, other than those Malaysia videos. I mean, YouTube can be a full-time job, for sure. Editing takes a lot of time, so yeah. Uh, Kevin, my husband, was an in the military I'm his widow, that's why I have a uh, military retirement. Why I'm sorry about uh, your husband passing away, Carolina, but I'm glad that you can continue to benefit from, um, from that pension. I'm glad that they do that. I'm, assu I'm assuming you have the survivor benefit program, which is great. Anyone who has a spouse should have that. I lucked out with cheaper Thai Elite. All right, good, 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 good. Yeah. I mean, I think the Thai Elite, I, I'm so glad I got the Thai Elite visa. For those that don't know, that means me and Wonderla Wonderlust Travel with Joe can travel in and out of Thailand as much as we want for 20 years, which is amazing. I wish, it, I, I don't know if you saw the email they sent out the other day, but now they have an affiliate link. So I could have got like 250,000 baht, baht from you joining Thai Elite if they had that back in the day, which is about, 250,000 baht is probably about, what is that? It's about $6,000, I think. So, I first saw Kevin when he started cruising on Princess. I'm Princess Elite. Yeah, a lot of people found me from cruising, specifically Princess Cruising, especially when, um, when uh, Let's Go Travel Tips started talking about me and uh, then have me on their channel. And so I'll be forever grateful for them because they exposed me to cruise audience. Oh yeah, Deborah just said that. Found you from Allison Gordon from Let's Go Travel Tips. I need to watch your vids from Van Life Days. I follow other Van Lifers. Yeah, yeah, um, Allison and Gordon from, um, from uh, Let's go travel tips. They're the ones that put me on the map for cruising YouTube and got my YouTube channel back to, you know, back to producing an actual decent income. Why am I traveling in a Honda Civic verse? Not a Honda Civic, a Honda Element. <laughs> I would not try to travel in a Honda Civic, but um, I sold my Travato when I when I left, I sold my Travato at the height of the market. I actually made money off my Travato. So I got to drive it around for a year and I, I made some money when I sold it. So I'm glad I sold it when I sold it because now the prices are dropping like a rock. But yeah, I knew I was gonna be traveling for at least a year or two without traveling in it. It's a depreciating asset, so I decided to just sell it. And I can always get another one when I come back, so. Most of the million sub channels have entire teams backing them. Yeah, I mean, when I was making $10,000 a month doing van life, I hired a video editor. Uh, they just aren't very good. They weren't very good for the, they're really good for like sit down talking videos, like the financial channels and maybe like Emma Cruz's does where you just sit down and you talk. She does her own editing by the way, but you just sit down and talk like talking head video. Um, they're good for, but the kind of, 
shooting I do, which is in multiple locations, they're not very good at that. And uh, so I was not happy with the quality of editing I was getting. They did a great job on my thumbnails. Like my thumbnail game at that time was really good, but they just it just wasn't good. So I tried that. I tried building out a team, but I'm a one-man show now. For most of my cruise life, I've been a one-man show. Can you talk about finding good flights using points, transfer partners, and other options? So for, the, for those who don't know, I use Chase Sapphire Reserve. A couple of you got the Chase Sapphire Reserve and used my link. It doesn't tell me who it was. So thank you for whoever did that because they gave me 10,000 points, which in Chase is like $200. So beautiful thing. Thank you very much. And someone did the IHG one as well, uh, but I haven't got the points for that one yet, but that'll give me 50,000 IHG points. So thank you. The links are down below if you decide you want to get those cards. But with Chase, I either book through the Chase Travel Portal. I, I, I search around first. So I know who all the Chase partners are. Um, th things like Hyatt, things like uh, IHG, like Southwest, things like that. So what I'll do is I'll go to Google Flights. I'll see what the cheapest flight is that I'm thinking about doing. And if it's a Chase partner, great. And then I'll try to find what Chase Partner is the cheapest. And then I'll go to the Chase Portal. And I'll look at the Chase Portal and see what the flight costs on the Chase Portal. And then I'll go to that airline's website. And I'll look at what the cost is on that website for points. And then if it makes sense for me to transfer the points from Chase to like Southwest, for example. When I'm in the United States, I fly almost exclusively Southwest. Because there's a really good transfer value from Chase to Southwest. And so what I'll do is like, let's say a Southwest flight is, um, is $400, but it's only 7,000 points. So 7,000 points on Chase would be like, um, would be like uh, 7,000 points would probably be like $120. So I'll just pay for it in Chase points instead of, I'll transfer the points over and then I'll just pay for it in those points. Now, a lot of times when you book through the Chase portal, like let's say I book a Southwest flight through the Chase portal, then I'll also get, not only will I get, book it on, on points and it's free, but when I go to fly the Southwest flight, Southwest gives me Southwest points. So I build up Southwest points, airline points that way too when I buy it through the Chase portal. So that's another thing a lot of people don't realize is something you gotta kinda have to factor in. But when you book through the Chase portal, you still get the, you still are buying a Southwest ticket. Southwest or, or American Airlines or whoever can, treats it like you purchased it with money because you're not using their points, you're using points from another source. And so you'll get points on theirs. So not only do I have all these Chase points, I have a ton of airline points with United, um, with Singapore Air, with Alaskan Air, with all like all these different airlines, I have a ton of points. So I always look to like, who do I have points with right now when I'm doing that Google flight search? Because maybe I have a ton of Alaskan Airline miles uh, that I used on a, because I booked a, a flight to Hawaii using Chase. Maybe I have a ton of Alaskan Airline miles. And so I'll look, and maybe I can get a free flight out of Alaska and off those points that have just been sitting there forever. So that's another way, too. So hopefully that answers your question. Chris says, I remember your Travato days going to Alaska in June. Your comments on the Chase Sapphire turned my attention to points and miles. Very cool. I love the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Uh, the new Thai Elite, in my opinion, has less perks for a higher price. Yeah, the new Thai Elite, I mean, I haven't even put the link to it where I would get 250,000 baht. I haven't even put a link to it because I'm not so sure it's a good deal for people now. Uh, Joe, the computer guy, says, I applied for the reserve waiting for approval or denial. 
Uh, the best deal with Sapphire Points is to transfer directly to airlines. I agree with that. Or Hyatt. You get a ton of value through Hyatt, by the way, if you like Hyatt hotels. Don't ever transfer to IHG, by the way. But uh, uh, that's not a good transfer value. It's better to just buy IHG points. You'll get a much better value with them. But yeah, that's true. And also, uh, Andrea Gold's mentioning Rakuten. And yeah, you definitely want to use Rakuten to book stuff because then you get like 2 to 10% off of stuff. I have a Rakuten link down below too, by the way. Um, whenever I book a Princess Cruise, I always book through Rakuten and then they'll give me cash back on it. So that's great as well. And I also have a link to Princess. If you book a Princess Cruise, they'll give you $25 off. So if you use Rakuten and you use my link, I, I think you can use both at the same time. You'll get like 25 off your cruise or onboard credit or something like that. Plus you'll get two to 4% off whatever it is right now. It fluctuates. Have I ever been to Belize? Yeah, I've been to Belize. Belize is beautiful. Um, yeah, Belize is great. I was in Belize a couple weeks ago, actually. All right, I'm all caught up. I've been going for two hours now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this live stream short. Thanks for everyone who joined, asked questions, commented, had a couple super chats in there. Thank you, super chat people. And um, everyone who uh, joined the live stream today, I appreciate it. I'll be putting out a video in a couple days uh, about um, after 200 days on Princess, what I think about Princess. So someone just asked, what do I think about cruise residences? Um, I wouldn't want to be on the same cruise ship for that long, I don't think. Like, if you did it and decided you didn't like the cruise ship, it would suck because you already paid for a year. So I would only consider that if they let me do it for a while as a trial and not have to commit to a long term. But anyway, that's the last question I'm going to answer. Goodbye, everybody. See you on the next.